Oh, I'll get one downstairs, Pop. No, 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 that's all right. We'll just clean up here. We'll take care of this in the morning. Your little wife's waiting for you. Nah, that's all right. She wouldn't wait up. No wonder I don't have any grandchildren. <laughs> Kids. Only a couple of hundred thousand years separate us from the animals, which may explain why the coat of civilization we wear sometimes frays around the edges. Underneath, we're still animals, and maybe that's our better side. Somehow this thing we call civilization has managed to twist our instincts around about 180 degrees. Every other species runs from a fire. We set them. Someone loosen these pipes so that the oil will drip onto these rags when the counter burns down low enough. A time bomb. What makes me guess this building's losing money? Your paper print guesses? Well, no. Well, then don't make them. What killed the kid? A big wrench upside the head. We got this wrench? Yeah, of course it does. Okay, give me a copy of this report. Doesn't look complicated. Kid came downstairs, went to the boiler room. Whack. Yeah. Now all you gotta do is find the guy who wanted to burn this building down. All right, let's go. Charming fella you hang around with. Yeah, tell me about it. Dead? I know, I heard. I know. <laughs> Somebody trying to burn a building. Is this true? It appears to be. Uh, if you just let us finish with Mr. Turley. No. Is this really necessary? I'll need a couple more minutes, okay? Look, I manage the building. Bill Sheldon. Just let me take him upstairs. Whatever questions you have, I'm sure I can answer them better than they can anyway. We can reach you this number? Yeah, sure. Look, I'll call you. Come on, Mike. Come on. Hildy, let's go upstairs. There's nothing you can do here. Put your nose around a little more, Freddy. Maybe you ought to start with the landlord. I'll bet he's losing money and has lots of insurance. The landlord's Turley, and it's his son who got killed. Sorry? Keep thinking. I thought you quit. Look, let's not rule out anything. It wouldn't be the first time that someone was cutting their own trap. I don't know, Lieutenant. The guy's a retired fireman. Turley? Hard to imagine a man who spends his life putting out fires, all of a sudden starting them. Are you sure we came up with the right story on how the sun got down there in the first place? Yeah, they were fixing a sink. Curling the boy. The lady with the sink confirms it. Well, that's progress. 
Has anybody checked out the M.O. with the arson squad? They were impressed. Well, then maybe it comes down to somebody who knew something about fires to come up with the idea. Keep on top of it. I don't know. A man tries to burn down a building with his family in it? He didn't say that. He said, keep on top of it. You don't have to bite my head off. <sighs> Elaine, why don't you handle the loopholes and leave us to handle the investigation? Hmm? Thousand pardons, officer. First it was Colby and Tom, now Elaine. I mean, you still got Freddie and Stevie and, of course, me to go. I'm working on it. Hello, Brian. Yes, Mr. Sheldon. Where? Okay, we'll be right there. Thanks for calling. Seriously, what the hell's eating you? Would you relax? Just relax. You relax? I'm relaxed. I couldn't get any more relaxed. I don't usually come in this late at night. I know you guys wanted to talk to me. Damn shame about Mikey. And they were still in shock when I left. I told them I was going to talk to you. We appreciate it. Oh, anything I can do. You want to know about the building? Anything you can tell us? Well, eight, nine years ago, Mike got burned in a fire. Nothing critical, but it got him out of the department. He had a bit of insurance money from it. Had a few bucks put aside. I helped him get into the building. What can you give us that's up to date? Oh, nothing, really. I manage the property. Mike and his son do did the maintenance. Did it make money? You're asking about arson, is that it? No, I'm asking if it made money. Well, up until a year ago, yeah. I mean, nothing fancy, but it kept them in potatoes. Then the whole damn building started springing leaks. What kind of leaks? Well, leak leaks. The money leaks, the plumbing, the window, one of the staircases, you name it. We had a couple of tenants move out, you know, your basic bad to worse kind of thing. All right, now I am asking about arson. What kind of insurance did the building have on it? No, zilch. What do you mean? You have to have insurance. Yeah, tell me about it. I mean, you don't pay the premium, you don't get insurance. Here, call him yourself. What about enemies? Did anybody have it in for him? Mike Turley, are you kidding? Everybody loved Mike. I mean, really loved the guy. Now, how many people can you say that about? Not too many. All right, thanks very much. I uh, hope I was able to answer all your questions. Not all of them. Somebody wanted the building burned down. This thing gets more screwed up every minute. How about a sandwich? Uh, no, I'll drop you somewhere. I got something to take care of. You giving up eating all the other? I got something to take care of, OK? Sorry I asked. summer camp, retreat, whatever you call it. Yeah. He wants to know if I'm still going to be able to take him on it. And I didn't know what to tell him until I checked with you. Did you tell him that? No, I said I'd check the date. <sighs> well, thanks for not making me look like the Wicked Witch of the West. You don't. <sighs> You're not making this any easier for me, Kevin. What are we doing it for, then? Because I can't go through it anymore. You know why. All right. All right. Well, what do you want me to tell him? Tell him.
tell him. I know what he wants, and I know what you want. But I don't see any reason in continuing. I mean, what is the purpose? I don't know from purpose. Is there any reason he has to be hurt by all this? So what are you what are you planning on doing? Picking him up on the odd weekend and taking him to a ball game? That's your answer. Yeah. I, I guess it is. Well, I'll tell him something. Kevin? How are you? Still not smoking. I just don't like coming on strong, Ian. It's not my style. <laughs> You're doing just fine. Hey, I'm out on a limb with this one. We've already postponed the announcement once. Are you going to get the property, or aren't you? I've told you I'll get it. You know that we can't go ahead with this. There's one lot missing. We'll have to go elsewhere. I've offered the man 10 times what it's worth. I'll go higher if I have to. It's not an election year, Charlie. Don't worry so much. Me worry. You're the guy with the two million invested. You don't put these pieces together fast enough, we're gone. It's that simple. The pieces are together. Charlie, I'm not going to be stopped by a retired fireman. Good luck to you. A unit that was standing by, go ahead. That's in bad. He's in with uh, Lieutenant Hogan. There have been three counts of B&E on this. Are you interrupting anything? Oh, come on in. Got anything on that Turley case? When I find out, it'll be on your desk. Elaine, I need a favor. You have a friend who works in the Bureau of Housing, right? And which friend? Do you have a friend who works down there? Oh, uh, she's not a friend. She's in my exercise class. Well, whatever. Does she work down there? Mm-hmm. All right, get in touch with her. Have her find out what she can about the Turley building, uh, when it was purchased, uh, if and when appraised, insurance. I'll try. Somebody must have had a good reason to try to burn down that building. What about the grudge angle? Turley have any enemies? Next on my list. Hi, how you doing? Looking for Mike Turley? He's upstairs with the chief. A few people skipped out on the leases, but that's about it. Uh, and a few months ago, a pipe burst. And a couple of tenants gave me a hard time, but they, they got a lawyer and withheld their rent, and then they, they moved out. Hmm. Do you know their names? Anyone who might have moved out in the last year or so? Oh, well, uh, these ain't that kind of people. They're, uh, you know, they're families, mainly. Well, we just have to check everything out. Yeah, we'll check with Bill. He's got all the books. Oh, Sheldon? Yeah, but you're just wasting your time. I mean, these are, these are good people. Look, you never got into an argument with anybody? Somebody might be holding a grudge against you? Well, I've been thinking about that, but... I spent most of the last 20 years right here, you know? 
I've been thinking maybe it's because I was a fireman. You know, somebody's idea of a joke. That'd sure be a kick in the head, wouldn't it? It's, you spend all those years thinking you're helping people, and then something like this happens to Mike Jr. You, you don't think it could have been that, do you? We don't know, Mr. Turley, but we're going to find out. I can promise you that. Thanks. Elaine Jeffers, please. Got your message. What's up? Hi, Elaine. The best thing I ever got out of exercise class. Oh, I don't know. So simple, I almost didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Shelton's story checks out. The building is uninsured. Turley's got two mortgages. So, I got curious about the value of the building. So I started checking up on sales of similar buildings in the area. That's when I found it. Found what? Just a minute, and I'll show you. I was surprised about the volume of sales around there. It's not a hot real estate area, and yet the buildings kept changing hands constantly. So I got an area photo and started marking the number of sales I could find over the past four years. It's all in a five-block area? Exactly. And Turley's building is right here. Hmm. I guess that's how it's done. If you want to level off a bunch of old buildings and put up a skyscraper, you just buy them off quietly so you don't drive up the prices. Five blocks, that's some skyscraper. That's right. It's something bigger. Well, we better find out what. Whatever it is, as soon as the plan is announced, this property is going to be worth hundreds of millions. And whoever owns the property doesn't want Turley's building in the middle of it. Exactly. Well done. It wasn't easy to trace. There's a whole network of interlocking companies. But you got to the bottom of it, right? I got to Ian Wells. Ian Wells. I've never heard that name before. He's a developer, real power player. Tivoli Towers. Right. Didn't he take on the mayor and the planning commission to finish that building? And won, no contest. Jeez, look at that place. I wonder if he'd like to have that kind of money. Hell. Just hell. God. I gotta have this car. Tonight. Come on, it's junk. It's junk. Maybe for you. For me, all my troubles will be over. We're police officers. We'd like a few words with Mr. Wells. Yes, sir. Uh, please come in. for something. I'd just like to ask you a few questions, Mr. Wells. Sure. Look, I'd like to invite you to sit down, but as you can see, I'm right in the middle of a business meeting. Uh, can I get you a drink, an iced tea or something? Gordon, get these gentlemen something to drink. Well, that won't be necessary, thank you. So, what's this all about? We're investigating a homicide. It happened in a building on the corner of Taylor and Third. That's a long way from here. We have evidence that suggests you've made a great many purchases of property in that area. Have I? And we'd like to know if you made an offer on the building in question. It's uh, an apartment house. Well, frankly, gentlemen, I uh, don't see how my private business affairs are any of your concern. Mr. Wells, this is a homicide. As he said, that makes it our concern. I hope for your sakes you're not suggesting that I murdered somebody. Mr. Wells, we are conducting an attempted arson investigation. We are trying to establish a motive. Now, if people were aware of your interest in purchasing this building, then the value of the building would increase a lot, wouldn't you say? Well, if you're smart enough to figure that out, you want to be smart enough to appreciate why I won't share that kind of information with anyone who just happens to walk through my front door. Then you must be smart enough to know that I can get a court order that will make you do just that. By all means. Then why are we wasting each other's time? Because I retain a half dozen lawyers to deal with just that kind of little inconvenience. Now, you talk to them. 
I'm sure you'll find that they won't feel in the least that you're wasting their time. Are there any more questions, officers? No, you've been very helpful, Mr. Wells. Good. Missy, see these gentlemen to the front door. See, it hasn't been a total waste of time. Good to see you, Councilman Lester. Stranger. Hi, Nick. Kevin sent you? I think of things all by myself sometimes. Really? Well, you haven't thought of coming in here in over two weeks? Oh, would you believe I wasn't thirsty? Would you believe I'm sorry? You don't have to apologize. I think I do. You're my friend. Kevin's my friend. There's no reason for any of that to change just because you two are... No. That isn't any reason for anything to change. My point exactly. Most couples split up and they divide up their friends like community property. <sighs> Nobody wants it to happen. It's just they don't know how to stop it. Well, I'm really glad you do, Tommy. Are you being facetious? Of course not. Where else could you walk into a bar and demand a glass of milk? <laughs> to absent friends. Yes, I will. Freddie, here's all I can do. Kevin, I want to see you. And Frankie, too. See what we get for coming in early? Jambone. And shut the door. What the hell have you two been up to? I've received a half dozen phone calls this morning from people who can make my coming to work very uncomfortable. Do you know whose button you pushed? Yeah, Ian Wells. Exactly. I'm surprised the mayor hasn't been on the phone yet. Wells has been buying up a very large chunk of real estate. Turley's building is right in the middle of it. And this is connected with the homicide? Is this a guess, or do you have something to go on? We don't have a line on what games you're playing, but somebody sure is hell playing games. The answer is you're guessing. Are you telling us to drop this? I'm telling you that I've got orders from downtown instructing you two to meet Mr. Wells at his home now. Whatever he has to say, you listen carefully. And what's the punchline? Take it easy. I think you're fishing. And if you want a little friendly advice, try fishing in another pond. I don't think I'm fishing. Then you call it, Kevin. If you're sure, and I mean damn sure, then you do what you have to do. And I'll worry about the heat. Fair enough. Wait a minute. No, no, not, not you, Frankie. It's okay. Sit down, Kevin. We've been down a few rows together, Kevin. You were younger than Jambone there when we first started riding. Well, I'm older now. You can get to the point quicker. I'll get there. I got my own style. It's just that I always figured we were uh, cut from the same cloth. Get the job done. We, we do what we have to do. We never carry our personal problems up those stairs here. If this is going where I think it's going, we should leave it, Jeff. The hell we will. Now, I'm 22 years in this job. Seven of them as commanding officer. And in that time, I've never said more than two words to any one of my men about their personal problems. So if I break my own rule, there's got to be a pretty damn good reason. All right, I'm listening. I've been around a couple more corners than you have, Kevin. So I got a right to ask. What exactly is going on with you and Nicky? <laughs> Nothing. Then you're a damn fool. She's a better woman than you deserve. And you know that. 
That's what I seem to be finding out. You're talking to the wrong person, Jim. No, I don't think so. You know, my wife left me twice. You and I share a job that has the highest divorce rate of any occupation in this country. Now, that should uh, tell us where the problem is. What, I'm the problem? You put up brick walls, Kevin. Thick brick walls. I put up a few of my own. I... I can't change the way I am. You can't? There's a hell of a lot of room for improvement. Fine, you made your point. No. I'll make it now. Get it back, Kevin. Do what you have to do. Now take that advice from an old friend who's been there. Let's go. What was all that about? Well, he's giving me a little advice about the case. It's personal. About Nikki? Because I think you're making a big mistake there. I mean, you know, if you want to talk. I don't. Right. Okay, fine. I was just thinking. Frankie, I appreciate it, but drop it. Glad I could help. You met Councilman Lester? No, he is. And this is uh Detective Jambo. Hi. How do you do? Please sit down. Mr. Lester is concerned about an investigation you've been conducting. I'd like to pass that concern along to you. It's already been passed along. You seem to have very good connections with the department counselor. Then may I assume we won't be having any more problems? I didn't know you had a problem. The investigation's still going on, if that's what you mean. Let me put it to you as plainly as I can, Detective. Apparently, in the course of pursuing an entirely unrelated matter, you uncovered a speculative project which Mr. Wells and some other people are involved in. What other people? I don't know that that's anything that concerns you right now. We are concerned with a homicide investigation and with anything that may be getting in the way of it. I'm a member of the city council. I'm attempting to clear up a problem for a constituent. I find your insinuation very insulting, but I'm going to let it pass because I still have hope that we can be reasonable here. Interesting word, reasonable. Oh, get off that horse, O'Brien. You don't seriously think the people associated with Mr. Wells had anything to do with that murder. Then what are you all so worried about? I could have you gentlemen taken off this case. I assumed you'd already tried doing that. Well, I may just have to try again. We are looking into a homicide. And we're going to do whatever we have to to get to the bottom of it. Now, I might say that I am sorry that your little land grab got caught in the middle of it, but I really don't care. I also don't care about being threatened any time, but especially when I'm doing my job. Don't press your luck, O'Brien. So go ahead, Mr. Wells. You let the counselor make his phone calls, and then I will call a press conference, and we will see which one of us can scream the loudest. You are making a very big mistake, O'Brien. It's my week for it. Mike, are you in here? Yeah, I'm over here. Well, why did you come on up? In a little while. You all right, Mike? Yeah. I just thought there might be, I don't know, something. Some clue that bastard might have left. Yeah, the cops already checked on that, huh? What are you doing this to yourself for? Somebody killed my boy. What am I supposed to do? Just forget about it? Oh, it might be better. This isn't doing anybody any good. Come on, let's get out of here. Hilda could use the company. You know, he must have been standing right over there waiting when Mike came down. I wonder what he was thinking. Think he knew he was going to kill him? Yeah, it was probably some guy just too scared to think. You know, it was an accident, like a car wreck or something. Mm -hmm. Come on, don't make yourself crazy over it. You ought to get out of this place, Mike. Sell out. Walk away. You gotta forget about it. This building is all we got. We're holding on to it. Well, it might be better somewhere else, you know? Not so many memories. I'm not gonna forget nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who's gonna get it? 
<laughs> you should have seen the look on the guy's face when Kevin told him what he could do with his influence. <laughs> I imagine I'll see enough of him tomorrow to last me the rest of my life. Well, at least we know City Hall is tied up in it somehow. Buying land isn't illegal, Kevin. Homicide is. We still have a long way to go. We know they wanted Turley's property, but why would anyone kill for it? Why couldn't they just buy it? Well, that's what we have to find out, isn't it? Uh, it's getting a little late. Uh, maybe just grab a cab. No, I'll give you a lift. No, no, it's okay. Really. You sure? Yeah, fine. Night, Elaine. Good night. See you. Do you think we embarrassed him? Frankie, that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> We stand. You can get the property for a million. Last time we talked, it was half a million. That was then. This is now. Well, that's an awful lot of money for selling something you don't even own. Oh, I'll own it. How? Another bungled arson? Another stupid homicide? What are you talking about? You cheap little conniver. You think I don't know about your games? I'm not playing any games, Mr. Wells. I'm offering you a piece of property. Do you want it or not? The cops are practically living here because of you and your petty little hustles. That's not my problem. It's not. I was ready to pay your fireman friend a half a million dollars for that miserable excuse of an apartment building. You were gonna get 50,000 just for putting the deal together. Mm -hmm. I was. You never even told him about the offer, did you? You figured a way to get the whole thing for yourself. Wouldn't you? I'm used to money, Shelton. I'm not a petty little hustler whose eyes light up like a slot machine the first time he sees a jackpot. People get very stupid when they let that happen. Only I'm going to get that property, Mr. Wells. I've knocked around long enough waiting for a chance like this, and whether you like it or not, you've got to deal with me. Do I? Maybe I should just call the cops and tell them that you've been promising me the Turley place for months. You're bluffing. How long do you think it would take them to figure out what happened that night in the basement? You don't fool me, Wells. That's not going to get you the property, is it? Well, then I'll do what I should have done in the first place. I'll let my own people get in touch with Turley. You won't do that. You can't. Watch me, Sheldon. You don't. Get out of here. Get out. You're finished. You killed your friend's son for nothing, Sheldon. surprise myself sometimes. I've had a few surprises myself, Were they all really surprises? Some of them, yeah. <laughs> Unit 12-7, response. Unit 12-7, response. Unit 12-7, response. Unit 12-7. All we know at this point is that Ian Wells is dead, murdered at 35. In his brief but glamorous life, he ruffled a lot of feathers. Whether that had anything to do with his death is just speculation at this point. Police aren't saying anything. Back to you in the newsroom, Vic. That skunk never even gave me an interview. Well, he didn't bring a weapon with him. So my guess is he didn't come here to kill Wells. 
but something happened, and he hit him. Knocked him out, dragged him in there, and dumped him in the pool. Mm. What do you think? Turley found out Wells was involved and decided to even up the score? Well, we're not going to find out anything more hanging around here, are we? Let's go. You know, I did a feature with Wells a couple of months ago. I spent three days with him. Weird. Yeah? Yeah, like those mannequins that talk to you in Disneyland. <laughs> you know, they're perfect on the outside. But inside, you know, there's something really special that drives him, makes him work. Oh, I never got the sense there was a person inside him. I'm not sure there was one. Now, listen, what are your political connections like these days? Like what? Well, Wells was involved in some big kind of land deal. He's buying up property all over the city, and there was a councilman in it. Uh, uh, Charles Lester, he's involved in everything. Two points for that. In five points, you can tell me what in the hell was going on. Let's see what I can do. It's a lot, Tommy. Okay. Listen, uh, I stopped by Nikki's the other night. Well, then you know it was her idea, not mine. Yeah, something like that. We appreciate you coming down here, Mr. Turley. I just want to know what you were doing last night. I was at the funeral parlor. Uh, people there all the time. My, my son had a lot of friends. Jax. Okay, fine. Have you ever had any contact with Ian Wells? What the hell would I have to do with Ian Wells? He never offered to buy your building? Now, what would Ian Wells want with my place? Oh, we don't know. Did anyone offer to buy it in the past few months? Hmm? Oh, well, it, there was a lawyer who came around, but that, that's about a year ago now. Who sent him? I didn't ask. I turned him down flat. There's no way I'm going to sell that building. Just Wells. You think he's the one responsible for my son's... We don't know that yet. I think he's got a few more questions to ask you, Mr. Turley, and then you can go home. You want a coffee? Yeah, yeah, sure. Take it black, huh? Hi, you got a minute? Sure. Uh, listen, I didn't plan that call last night. That's all right. Things always happen for the best. Always tonight. Kevin, last night was last night. Who knows what would have happened if you hadn't received that radio call, but um, it was a matter of convenience, wasn't it? What do you mean? It wasn't very real for either one of us, Kevin. I don't know. Maybe a little. Lane, I am not... I'm sure what's real or not real these days. Look, I try to keep my job and my personal life separate. So do you. I don't think either one of us is ready to change that. Do you? All this over a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me what you found out about Mr. Turley. Well, he claims he never had any dealings with Ian Wells. Where does that leave us? Nowhere. We got to find someone who stood to gain by torching the building, and Wells is dead, and Turley had no insurance. What's next? Staring us right in the face. The mortgages. What mortgages? I told you about it the other day. Turley is mortgaged up to his eyebrows. If the building burns... Who held the mortgages on the building? Well, I make the checks out the Warranty Trust. I think that's what it's called. They, uh, they bought it out about a year ago. Freddy, find out who Warranty Trust is. You got it. Now, could Wells have known the building was uninsured? What do you mean, not insured? The premiums weren't paid. No. Well, I, I, I knew we were losing money, but I, I never figured it was that bad. Never. Listen, why don't you go home, Mr. Turley, and we'll call you if we have any further questions. Okay. Okay. You got what you wanted? Shoot. It's a convention center. It's going to be huge. The city planners haven't decided where it goes yet. At least that's what they put out for public consumption. But just guess who happens to be the head of the committee? Charles Lester. Well, if you already knew that, why did I spend half the day just tracking it down? Because that's what you're really good at. Don't worry, there's a great article in it for you. Obi, I got that stuff on Warty Trust. Small company owned by a real estate firm, William F. Sheldon Real Estate.
Hi. Good to see you. What the hell are you doing to me, Bill? What do you mean? Hmm? Uh, finish that tomorrow, will you? That's all right, Mr. Sheldon. Tomorrow? Good night. Now, Mike, what's got you so riled up? The fire insurance on the building, you haven't been paying it. It must have been some kind of mistake. No, there's no mistake. You told the cops about it. Now, why would you tell them and not me? Did you tell Wells, too, about the insurance? Wells? Ian Wells. If the building burns down and I'm not insured, then whoever holds the mortgage gets to keep the land. Now, isn't that right, Bill? What are you doing? I'm going to call the cops. Don't do that, Mike. No, it's the only way to get this thing settled. We gotta... You gotta believe that. I just got in over my head, that's all. You killed Mikey. It was an accident. God help you, Bill. It was an accident. I I didn't mean it. Put that thing down. I'll shoot, Mike. Don't think I won't. Go ahead. You killed my boy. Might as well kill me, too. Don't make me do it, Mike. I never meant to hurt anyone, never. Then put that thing down. And we'll settle this, just you and me. It was an accident, Mike. An accident. Now, how the hell did I know he was going to come down there like that? I had a chance to make a killing to get in on the ground floor or something. Now, you don't pass up a thing like that. Now, you'd have done the same thing, huh? I'm going to make you use that thing, Bill. Mike, I had a chance to get in the same league as Ian Wells. You killed my son for some stinking deal. Shut up! Hold it right there. Mike Turley spent his whole life saving lives. When he had every reason in the world to take a life, he couldn't do it. It has something to do with a man's humanity, his compassion. Those may be old-fashioned qualities, but Mike Turley was an old-fashioned guy. The city planning commissioners stood up on their hind legs and denied the permits to build the convention center. The decision has been appealed, and if the case is lost, it will be appealed and argued again. The syndicate has bought up most of the land, and every month they buy up more. They can afford to be patient. Commissioners change. People forget. Time is on their side. Ha, 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 ha.
Cheating.